Gather round, boys and ghouls, for a terrifying tale. On Halloween night, when the streets are filled with witches and ghosts, princesses, probably a Thor or two, and whatever Fortnite character is currently relevant, don't really care about that one anymore, something much scarier will be happening behind closed doors. You see, your neighbors are hiding a horrible secret from you this Halloween. They don't want you to find out, but I know what they're up to. And all of it is revealed by this. They're candy. Let's just say, don't trust your neighbors. Viewer beware, you're in for a scare. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the cool house on the block that gives away the full-sized candy bars. It's that time of year, my friends. There's a chill in the air, the leaves are changing color, your favorite YouTuber has suddenly decided it's cool to upload again because Q4 CPMs are up. That's right, it's Halloween. Store shelves filled with bags of bulk candy as trick-or-treating returns to a post-pandemic world. And every time Spooky Month comes up, the internet's filled with all sorts of listicles and infographics reporting on the year's most popular Halloween candy. Usually, it's broken down state by state so you can see how different parts of the country compare. And let me tell you, I cannot get enough of these sorts of charts. Like this map right here from CandyStore.com, which looks at bulk candy sales and breaks down the top three finishers for the entire US. It just feeds my natural instinct to look for patterns and ask questions like, why? Why are there so many states that have hot tamales as their number one candy? Seriously hurt you. I mean, maybe I'm completely wrong here. Please, let me know down in the comments section if Hot Tamale Lover describes you or anyone you know, cause I don't think I've ever met someone who's had more than like one or two of these little cinnamon pills in their life, let alone would put them in their top 10 candies. What is going on there in Minnesota, North Dakota, Nevada, and Virginia? Or how about this one? Swedish Fish only appears one time across the entire 50 state map. In Georgia, of all places. Why such a strong showing in that one specific area and nowhere else? There's so much delicious data to dig into here. But what I want to know is the story behind the numbers, the why of it. And once I started digging, I unearthed some uncomfortable facts about human nature. Nope, that is not an exaggeration. It pains me to tell you this, but your neighbor, yeah, they secretly hate your kids. And I know it thanks to an analysis of popular Halloween candies. Well, there were certainly some findings here that were shocking. There were also some things that made immediate sense. Take, for instance, the fact that Pennsylvania's favorite Halloween confection are Hershey's mini bars. If it's not immediately obvious to you why that would be the case. May I direct your attention to the town of Hershey, Pennsylvania? Just look at this photo taken at the intersection of Chocolate Avenue and Cocoa Avenue. Nope, your eyes are not deceiving you. Those are indeed Hershey kiss-shaped lamps. This isn't just some tourism gimmick either. The Hershey Company's corporate headquarters is just a short drive away. The entire reason the 13,000 person community of Hershey PA is on the map in the first place is because this is where all the workers settled. Here, you can get yourself a chocolate massage at the chocolate spa or ride the roller coaster Candemonium in Hershey Park. And Hershey's influence in the state goes well beyond the boundaries of just this one town. Out of six Hershey plants in the United States, four of them are located in Pennsylvania. Also, side note, notice that I didn't call Hershey a city, because it's not. It's actually a town or a community. You see, Hershey was started as a company town, where practically all stores and housing were owned by the one central company. In Hershey, the company controlled the housing, churches, parks, public transit, theater, swimming pool, but because it's unincorporated, they don't have themselves a local local government. All stories probably best saved for another day. Anyway, just because Hershey's is the main game in town, that doesn't mean that it's the only game in town. Drive just 10 miles south of Hershey and you'll arrive in Elizabethtown, home to the Mars Chocolate Factory, which manufactures Dove, Three Musketeers, Milky Way, and of course their most famous candy, the M&M, which, go figure, ranks number two among Pennsylvanians. Like I said, some trends are easy to explain. That kind of location-based loyalty got me wondering if it might be a possible explanation for Georgia's Swedish fish affinity. But according to all the research that I've done, the Swedish fish that get shipped around North America all come from a factory in Ontario, Canada. So if it's not location-based loyalty, what is the reason? Well, I started by looking backward for the first date that Swedish fish weren't in the number one position for Georgia. That took me back to 2019. At the time, Georgia was more of a jolly rancher state. So what changed to put the gummy groupers into the top spot? I suspect it might all be because of one man's unintentional public relations campaign. You see, in November of 2019, 
2019, so after the Halloween 2019 data was in the books, a University of Georgia football player named Jordan Davis went viral after he was caught munching Swedish fish on the sidelines. This player and this moment got a lot of local news coverage. Apparently, it was his favorite candy, so this 336-pound defensive tackle molded it into a core part of his identity as an athlete. Check his Twitter bio and you'll see that he describes himself as two things, Jersey number 99 and Swedish fish connoisseur. A news segment leading up to the NFL draft earlier this year described him as a man of two loves, football and Swedish fish. That's a perfect catch. Basically, he's a hometown hero who now plays professional ball. Knowing this, people just shower him with Swedish fish at games. Like this moment in 2021 when a kid on the sidelines handed him a bag. So am I saying that one Georgia footballer hashtag influenced the entire state of Georgia to propel Swedish fish to stardom? Not exactly. The candy was already popular enough to be ranked number two back in 2019. But it is interesting that both Swedish fish and Jordan Davis rose together after Halloween 2019. Just saying that the local report Reporting of him and his candy preferences may have been the thing to push Swedish Fish over the edge to lock in the number one spot for the last couple of years. So that's some local data, but what about the big trends? What were the nationwide patterns in the data? Are hotter states less likely to buy chocolate for fear of it melting? Are states with worse dental records the ones sucking down gummy worms and other chewy, sticky, and sour candies that have been shown to be the worst possible option for your teeth? As it turns out, no. I took all the candy ranking data and added in stats like average household income, dental hygiene scores, obesity, average yearly temperatures, and a few other data points for each state. And then I threw the whole thing into a pivot table. Now, for those of you who don't know, pivot tables are easy ways to slice, mix, and analyze large groups of data to try and find interesting trends. And what I found was nothing. Sure, there were plenty of individual data points that I could cherry pick as evidence to support a theory or another, but looking at the overall picture, there didn't really seem to be any strong correlations. For example, I looked into a state's favorite candy and saw if it had any relation to their dental health records. No correlation. If anything, other factors that we looked at in the data, like poverty rate, seem to do a far better job of predicting dental health. Not surprising, considering that people with low income are far more likely to be without dental insurance. Same story with hot states and chocolate, or states with more kids having a higher ranking for sour flavors. Nothing. No significant correlations no matter how I cross the data. Not only that, but none of my theories could explain completely bizarre trends, like the fact that so many states seem to have a thing for hot tamales. It was in the top three candies for 11 states. Not only that, but none of my theories could explain some completely bizarre trends in the data. I mean, I'd expect maybe one or two as some sort of weird outlier, like Louisiana's number one pick of lemon heads. But 11 states actively choosing hot tamales? And don't even get me started on candy corn. Fortunately, no state was crazy enough to have candy corn as their number one Halloween candy of choice, but a whopping 11 had candy corn rankings of two or three. Again, have you or anyone you know ever ranked candy corn as that high amongst your favorites? Yeah, me, because they're delicious, okay? Little striped layers of candy goodness, honey or butter toffee or whatever. I'm, I haven't really quite pinned the flavor yet, but if you don't like them, leave. You stay out of this, Aaron Hansen. But seriously, 11 states. That's as many appearances as Reese's Cups. Was I going crazy? What was going on here? And then it hit me. The answer had been staring me in the face the entire time. This data is looking at each state's candy purchases, specifically coming from bulk candy sales in early October in prep for Halloween. This cute little map isn't showing us what candy is the state's favorite. It's showing us what each state's favorite candy is to give away. It's telling us what people are putting in their shopping cart when it's time to buy a giant bag of fun-sized candy to fill the pumpkin-shaped basket that you put out for the neighbors. This explains why certain candies appear so highly in the rankings. I have never once bought hot tamales or candy corn voluntarily, but every Halloween they still seem to show up in my bag of candy because the neighbors are the ones buying them. So what gives? Do adults just have a remarkably poor read on what kinds of candy kids actually like? My friends, the truth is actually much sadder than that. If we look at the candies that are ranking high in Halloween popularity, and only Halloween popularity, we start to notice a disturbing trend. Since all the data is coming directly from an analysis by CandyStore.com, I decided to look at the rate they're charging for certain candy. I started with the popular choices, the kind of stuff that people are likely to eat year-round, just to establish our baseline. Fun-sized Snicker bars are among the most expensive at $11.93 per pound. Reese's peanut butter cups come out to $11.04. Skittles, 
$10 a pound, and bulk M&Ms are between 8 and 12 bucks per pound depending on variety. So our baseline is that most popular candy brands are gonna run you between $10 and $12 per pound of candy. Hot Tamales, on the other hand, the cinnamon-flavored candy that somehow ranked number one in four different states and ranks top three in eight others, $4.44 a pound. How about Sour Patch Kids, which ranked as number one in seven different states? Well, maybe the reason for that is because you can get Sour Patch Kids in bulk for a mere $5.20 per pound, half the price of the more mainstream candy. And Candy Corn, that flavored wax masquerading as candy, is the cheapest of them all at a mere $3.80 per pound, one-third the cost of the more premium candy brands. And that explains it, my friends. That's why these are the most popular Halloween candies. Outside of Sour Patch Kids, which are pretty darn good and seem to be pricing themselves extra low so they can capture the candy market, nobody in their right mind would pay money for hot tamales or candy corn at a checkout counter for themselves. But if all you're looking to do is do the bare minimum and fill the candy bucket while spending as little money as possible, these are the most rational choices. When you look at the candy purely in terms of how much people are paying for it, the truth is undeniable. This isn't about spreading Halloween cheer. It's about getting the brat off the lawn as quickly and cheaply as possible to ensure that they're not going to come back to egg the house. If you look at polls asking people what candies they actually like, you'll find that chocolate tops the list. The five candies with the highest approval ratings are M&Ms, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Hershey's Kisses, Kit Kats, and Snickers in that order. Most of these candies did manage to make their way onto the Halloween candy power rankings in one way or another, but one that was shockingly absent from all 50 states, Kit Kats. As soon as I looked at the price, it was immediately clear why. While most premium candy brands are gonna run you between $10 and $12 a pound, Kit Kats were by far the most expensive. A whopping $14.40 a pound. 20% more expensive than the already pricey Snickers. This also explains all the other contradictions in our data, like why we weren't able to establish a clear link between a state's candy rankings and their dental health. It's because the candy that's being bought at Halloween isn't necessarily the candy that's being eaten year round. Same thing with the temperature trends. Hot states are more than happy to pawn off that melted butter finger to the next door kid. Chocolate fingers aren't gonna be their problem after all. In short, if you're looking to min-max Halloween by buying the cheapest sugar available, now you know that you're in good company. Sure, you might not be giving out the favorite candy of the night, but hey, it'll suffice. That said, with Halloween finally fully back this year, consider spreading the spirit of the holidays by giving the people what they really want, M&Ms. Inexpensive, yet popular. Cause remember, saving money is one thing, but no one wants to wake up to a lawn full of free toilet paper. But hey, you know what's inexpensive and allows you to eat fresh, healthy, home-cooked meals? Our sponsor for today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered straight to your doorstep. When you think about it, it's kind of like reverse trick-or-treating. The food comes to you instead of you going to the food. Let's just say that some of us aren't the most confident in the kitchen. You ready for some Hello Freshness? Oh, you can tell I'm ready. I've got my spatula. Chefs are compensating for something. Those huge spatulas. Lack of cooking skills. The bigger the spatula, the more insecure in the kitchen. Is this even a spatula? Let us know down in the comments. What, what is the name of this? I don't know. <laughs> It's not special. Others can be pretty picky eaters. This is where we are with food exposures with Ollie. My plate, Matthew's plate, Ollie's plate. And some of us are cats. You know who else is ready for this HelloFresh meal? Ski! Regardless of who's in the kitchen that night, HelloFresh is gonna have you covered with kid-friendly meals that are picky eater-proof, fit and wholesome meals that are diet-proof, and vegetarian or pescatarian meals that are meat-proof, I guess. Best of all, HelloFresh's meals are done quickly. Fall is our busiest time of year between out-of-town visitors and extra end-of-the-year videos, so there's not a whole lot of time for wasted cooking. But with HelloFresh providing the meals and easy step-by-step -step instructions, we're able to have food on the table in around 30 minutes. So if you're interested in impressing the family with delicious home-cooked meals this holiday season without all the hassle of having to plan out the meals and go out and get the ingredients and measure them out and all that stuff, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code FOODTHEORY65 to get 65% off plus free shipping. Not only are you getting quick, healthy, delicious meals for the holidays, with the money that you save, you're gonna be able to buy some better Halloween candy for the neighborhood kiddos. No more cinnamon pills and fondant corn for the kiddos from this household, my friends. We're going straight for the good stuff. Again, that is HelloFresh.com and use the code FOODTHEORY65 to get that 65% off plus free shipping. And as always, my friends, remember, that's just a theory. A food theory. Happy holidays. Halloween.